Welcome to the podcast on Masonic Law, where we hope to build curiosity and desire to better understand our regulations. What's up, brothers? This is Rick Moore, past master of Fort Worth 148. And it's good to be back on the air again talking about Texas Masonic Law. Now, I want to remind you guys, this is the best that I understand this law. And it's not the gospel. Um, this is not something that's going to be admissible in a Masonic trial that, you know, that's not the way the guy on the podcast explained it. It's it's not going to get you out of any trouble. So make sure you investigate this self, this stuff for yourself. That's the whole point of this is to kind of familiarize you with it and uh, hopefully set you to looking through that law book, whether it be digital or, or the pages. So with all that said, today we're going to talk about Article 276A, which was amended at uh, Grand Lodge this past session and definitely created a lot of confusion because uh, it's something that always comes up about the uh, proficiency of the ritualistic opening opening and closing. So let's talk about 276A. Now, in the past, there's been two um, sections to that, uh, that a officer being installed as a, a warden or master has to, uh, to the satisfaction of the members of his lodge, be proficient to open and close and enter to Prentice Fellowcraft, Mason's Lodge, and Master Mason's Lodge of Sorrow. Still the same. You still have to go through that and uh, fill that date out on the Form 101 that has to go to the DEGM by a certain date. And the second one, uh, to the satisfaction of the members of the Lodge, he shall have completed a Grand Lodge approved course in the administration of his duties, uh, i.e. the LIFE program that's conducted by a Lodge counselor or the officer leadership training that the Masonic uh, Education and Services holds throughout the state. You attend both of those that that would satisfy 276A until last Grand Lodge when a third section was added. Uh, in all cases, unless otherwise exempt as hereafter provided, by attending at least one forum conducted under the auspice of the Committee on Work during the 12 months prior to his installation as Worshipful Master, Senior Warden, or Junior Warden. So there's more, but that uh, section essentially is saying if you've been elected to serve as one of those 12 months before you're installed each time, you have to attend a forum that's hosted by the Committee on Work. Not an exam. You have to attend the forum. And there is a form which you're going to have to take with you. It's a Form 101A uh, that shows that you showed up on time. And you left after the forum was over, not before it was over, uh, but you left after the forum was over and attended the whole thing. And it, that is attached to the Form 101. Now, there are exceptions to that. Um, if you already, brothers who hold a Class C certificate or better, or are certified as proficient by the di district instructor for the Masonic district in which the lodge is located, that's key. Can't be somebody, another district instructor from across the state. Has to be the one from the lodge you're being installed in. Uh, or district instructor at large or, or a member of the committee on work. Uh, in that case, you're exempt 
from the requirement of attending a forum. Uh, if an officer is being installed as worshipful master or a warden in multiple lodges located in different districts, the officer is only required to be certified as proficient by only one district instructor, district instructor at large or member of the Committee on Work for exemption. Uh, same thing with attending the forum. If you attend that, that would apply if you're being installed in multiple lodges. Um, so you know the whole key to this was to attend that forum to see how the um, to see how the opening and closing is supposed to be done as prescribed by the committee on work. So it's not as uh, it's not as obtrusive as I think everybody thought it might be at once, and maybe that's why it passed as well. Who knows? Uh, but it, it's law now. So um, if you're being installed then you've got to go attend one of these forums. And if you've never been, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, it they're great. All the members of the Committee on Work uh, host great forums. I've been to many of them and learned something every time. So, um, And you can even hang out. You don't have to. You can even hang out and kind of watch an exam so you can see that when you mess up, they, they don't actually uh, thrash you or anything with a bamboo stick anymore. So it's, it's, it's pretty fun and, and you'll see it's great, great brothers. Um, now caveat to this all is in section two of this article, 276 a says, um, any person who has previously served as worshipful master of a lodge under the jurisdiction of the grand lodge of Texas is exempt from the requirements of this article. So it doesn't say exempt from this section. It says article, which implies the article in its entirety, which includes section three. So if you're a past master, you get a hall pass again. Uh, but I, I would recommend to anybody to attend a forum uh, for sure. They're like I say, they're a learning experience and you, you get to meet brothers you, ha you haven't met before um, from across the jurisdiction and stuff like that. So it's always a good time. Alrighty, gentlemen, I guess until next time, uh, pick up that law book every once in a while and just see what plops open to you. You're going to be so surprised. I promise you it's going to inspire you to start submitting resolutions. <laughs> until next time, brother, be good. Be square.